So I have an important update in the Suppressor Freedom lawsuit, which aims to remove a statewide ban on the purchase and possession of suppressors. So let's break down what just happened in this case. Now, before we jump into this video, I wanna thank one of the new sponsors of the channel, which is Patriot Mobile. For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been the only company in America, the only wireless provider that has Christian conservative values. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you the ability to access all three major networks. That means that the same coverage you would get from those companies is the exact same that you would get from Patriot Mobile. And you can also then support a company that has the same values as you, which is pro freedom of speech, pro 2A and pro freedom. And also they are 100% based in the US, which means that if you need to call customer service, they're all here in the US and I believe most of their team is actually in Texas. So I recommend that you guys check out Patriot Mobile. If you're interested, you can go to patriotmobile.com forward slash scholar or you can call 972 Patriot. And if you use the code scholar, you can get a free activation fee. So again, really excited about this sponsor, a really cool company. They have the same values as us. And if you guys are interested, again, check out those links. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're going to be discussing two lawsuits, which aim to remove a statewide ban on the purchase and possession of suppressors. The cases we're gonna be talking about and breaking down in this video are the Morse versus Raul case and then also the Anderson versus Raul case. These lawsuits are very important because although there are 42 jurisdictions which allow for the ownership and use of suppressors, there are nine jurisdictions within the US which actually don't permit that. And you have various states like Illinois and then also California that have various bans on the purchase and possession and transfer of NFA items, including suppressors and then also SBRs. Currently in this case, the state of Illinois is trying to essentially have the case completely thrown out by arguing that suppressors are not arms at all and therefore they are not protected by the second amendment. The state of Illinois also is currently requesting that the judge in this case grant a judgment on the pleadings in the favor of the state of Illinois and because of that, throw the case out right here now. This current motion by the state of Illinois is attempting to avoid having the case move towards a full review, a full hearing, potentially a hearing on the merits. And instead, the state wants to have this case thrown out right here and now. And now the lower court has decided to hold review of the request for the judgment on the pleadings until another lower court in Illinois rules on a different issue, which deals with the Illinois ban on so-called assault weapons. This is an interesting development that now ties the outcome of the suppressor challenge also to the result of the Illinois PICA cases. One of the important things with the suppressor lawsuit like the one here in Illinois is that this lawsuit finally aims to make a state explain how an outright ban on suppressors is in fact consistent with Heller and now Bruin. Now the Supreme Court in Bruin stated that we have already recognized in Heller at least one way in which the second amendment's historically fixed meaning applies to new circumstances. It's reference to arms does not apply only to those arms in existence in the 18th century. Just as the First Amendment protects modern forms of communications and the Fourth Amendment applies to modern forms of search, the Second Amendment extends prima facie to all instruments that constitute bearable arms, even those that were not in existence at the time of the founding. Thus, even though the Second Amendment's definition of arms is fixed according to its historical understanding, that general definition covers modern instruments that facilitate armed self-defense. That is the same quote from the Bruin you know, case that was also recently cited in that machine gun decision out of a district court in Kansas. And that's the same type of argument that is being made in this Illinois suppressor lawsuit that suppressors are bearable arms, that they are arms protected by the text of the Second Amendment, and therefore the burden shifts to the state of Illinois to put forward historical evidence to justify an outright ban on the purchase and possession of these items. But now the state of Illinois has also, like I mentioned, filed for a motion for a judgment on the pleadings. Now, for those not aware, a motion for a judgment on the pleadings is a motion made under the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. It's a 12C motion. And it's essentially used to attack the sufficiency of the opponent's pleadings and essentially to challenge the viability of the underlying claims prior to a trial. So here you have the state of Illinois challenging the Second Amendment arguments that are being raised by the plaintiffs. Uh, essentially, the state of Illinois is saying that the Second Amendment arguments are not sufficient, that they don't have a basis to move forward. And because of that, the court here should throw the case out. Now, in their motion, Illinois argues that plaintiffs raise a Second Amendment challenge 
to an Illinois law prohibiting the possession of silencers, which are attached to firearms to reduce the noise of gunfire. But the Second Amendment protects only the right of the people to keep and bear arms. They claim that silencers are not weapons. They go on to state that they are not used for self-defense and they are not necessary to the effective use of a firearm. So they are not arms within the meaning of the constitutional text and thus plaintiffs cannot prevail on their Second Amendment claims. So that is what the state of Illinois is arguing to the court in support of the suppressor ban. They also go on to argue that while an instrument did not have existed at the time of the founding to fall within the amendment's ambit, it still must fit the founding era definition of an arm. But a silencer, they claim, is not itself used to cast at or strike another. It does not contain feed or project ammunition, and it does not serve an intrinsic self-defense purpose. And while some people find silencers useful, Illinois argues they are not so critical to farms ownership that farms cannot be used effectively without them. The state's primary argument in their briefs is that suppressors cannot be considered an actual arm under the text of the Second Amendment because they're not an actual weapon. They don't you know, how to shoot a projectile or anything like that. So they claim because of that, they're not an arm, they're not a weapon, and it's not protected. But we've seen multiple times that courts, you know, see the definition of an arm in the text of the Second Amendment much more broadly. And, you know, you have certain things like arms, like body armor, which are something that you can take upon yourself to defend yourself, and then other types of accessories and other items which are considered arms. It's not just actual firearms. It's not just something that shoots projectiles. If that was the case, well then, you know, even things like knives and other things like that would not be protected. Now, also importantly, when you look at the state of Illinois and their arguments is the fact that the state wants to discard all other laws, including the NFA, which actually defines and treats a suppressor as an actual firearm. So they may say that these are not actual weapons, but at a federal level, these types of what they claim are just accessories are actually treated as firearms. Now, second, they want to gloss over the fact that the Second Amendment does not just protect arms, but also protects conduct and other things. The state also likes to make this blanket claim that suppressors are not used for self-defense, but that's also not true. We know that suppressors are clearly picked by a lot of people for, you know, by millions of people for lawful purposes like self-defense. And a lot of times you also have states like Illinois who say, well, just having them for the potential of self-defense is not actual use for self-defense. So states like Illinois also always want to you know, skew the data. They want to say, well, it's actual use of an item for self-defense, but that is not the true test. It's anything that the public at large decides is useful for self-defense. It's not actual use. Now, recently the judge in this case decided to halt all activity in the case until the judgment on the pleadings is ruled on by him. And there was recently a hearing that took place, um, a kind of a conference that took place. And recently the judge here also decided to hold all proceedings in this case until the courts in a different federal court, but still in Illinois, rule on the Illinois assault and ban challenges, which deal with the Protect Illinois Communities Act. Now, I think one of the concerns of the judge here in the Illinois suppressor case was the fact that the Seventh Circuit recently ruled in all those PICA cases and they came up with a very strange precedent. Uh, they came up with a strange analysis, which was based on militaristic weapons and the ability of a state to ban something that is useful for military service. This, of course, is not the correct analysis under Heller or Bruin, but that is what the Seventh Circuit did. That's what the Seventh Circuit at large is pushing for, and that's also impacting all the Illinois rifle ban cases. Now, after the Seventh Circuit issued that decision, of course, you had all these Illinois cases go up to Supreme Court for an emergency basis. Those were denied emergency review from the Supreme Court. And now the lower court judge, district court judge McGlynn, is trying to move all the Illinois PICA cases you know, towards a final merits decision as soon as possible. He's held hearings on that and he's pushing it forward to a final decision. And so now you have the judge here in the suppressor challenges deciding to hold his decision to see how the rifle ban cases play out and how another judge rules in light of what the Seventh Circuit said when it came to the PICA challenges. So for now, the suppressor challenge in Illinois has been put on hold and we're going to have to wait to see what the outcome of the rifle ban case is so then we can see how the suppressor case is going to move forward. Now, of course, if anything else changes, if anything else develops, I will let you guys know. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fill the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of 2A news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And don't forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.